Hey, what's up, everybody? This particular exercise in Colt Steel's The Ludwig Camp 2021, a lot of students have difficulty with it. Um, some of them say it's confusing to understand what is expected of them. So, uh, at this point, you may have already worked through it a little bit and you're just still not getting the answer. So, I'm going to help you work through the solution for this exercise. It says, let's get some practice using the filter method. Write a function called valid usernames that accepts an array of usernames that are strings and it should return a new array containing only the usernames that are less than 10 characters. For example, if you call valid usernames on this array of strings, it's going to go through them and it's going to return a new array here and the new array is just going to be the, the usernames that are less than 10 characters. So I'm going to open up the Chrome console here and we're going to work through this. All right, so the first thing it says to do is write a function, okay? So we know that we need a function. It even tells us to call it valid usernames. So we can say valid usernames. And then it says it accepts an argument of usernames as strings. So here's where the argument goes, right? And so we just put in usernames, that's what we're gonna call it. Now the function could look a little bit different if you wanted to use different syntax. This is a name function. You could also do something like uh, const usernames is equal to function, but that's not how we're going to do it in this particular case. Either of those will work. All right, so now that you have your function, what goes inside of it? So this function is taking an array of usernames. So this value here, usernames, is available inside the function, and it's going to represent an array of strings that are usernames, okay? So then we want to use the filter method, which is an array method, and filter over that array of usernames and then run a callback function on it. And that callback function determines what gets returned in the new function, right? Or sorry, in the new array. So the filter method always returns a new array. So what we want to do is assign that array to a variable and then we can return that array or we could just return the whole uh, method call, but I'll, I'll show you that in a second. All right, so inside of here we have usernames and we want to call filter on it, right? So usernames is an array, so we use the array method filter and then filter takes a, argu uh, takes a argument, which is a function, right? It's an anonymous function, otherwise known as a callback in this case. And let's go ahead and write that. Oop, didn't mean to press enter. So inside of this function, how do we access each of those usernames? So we do that by providing the function with an argument that represents the username. Okay. And so then now inside of here, we can return the username if it meets a certain criteria. And so in this case, we want to return it if it's less than 10 characters. So username.length, right, will tell us the length of the username. And then we can say less than, and then the integer value 10. So if this is correct, then valid usernames should take an argument of an array of usernames which it then filters over, and for each username in there, it only returns, meaning it only adds that username to the new array that gets returned, if it matches this right here. So let's see if that worked. But before we do that, we wanna make sure that what gets returned from here, uh, usernames.filter, this new array that we're gonna get from the filter method actually gets returned out of valid usernames. And we can do that two ways. We can either say return right here, or we can say let filtered usernames equal to, and I have a typo there, usernamers, usernames.filter. And then on the next line, after we're done with the filtering, we can say return filtered usernames. All right, so if we press enter here, now we have this function defined, we should be able to borrow, it's not letting me copy, that's annoying, uh, but we can go ahead and plug this code in here to this index.js file 
and check our solution, see if that works. Well done, your solution is correct. Okay, great. The other solution that's a little bit shorter that I mentioned a moment ago, I can make this a little bit larger so you can see it easier, is instead of assigning the result to a variable and then returning the variable after this whole bit of code is done running, what we can do is get rid of that, get rid of the variable definition, and just do the return keyword here. So we're just saying whatever we get back from usernames.filter, go ahead and return that from the function call valid usernames. So you can check the solution again, and it says, well done, your solution is correct. So let's work through this one last time. Basically, it wants us to write a function called valid usernames that takes an argument of usernames that represents an array of usernames that are all string values. Then we're going to call about filter on those usernames and we're going to run a function on every single username and this function determines which one of those usernames gets put into the new array that gets returned from this usernames.filter call. And so it's really simple. We just say function username and that username will represent each username inside of the usernames array, kind of like a for each method. And then for each of those usernames, we're just running this little condition on it. And so this is the tricky part because we don't actually have an if statement. You could, if you want to, you could say if username.length is less than 10, return username, right? That's the long form of what we have here. I'll show you that right now, just so it's not quite as confusing. So we're saying if username.length is less than 10, and then you can say return username. You want to put it inside of brackets, of course. So we say return username and go ahead and check the solution for that. And that's also correct. So this is kind of the longest form version of this is uh, if the username length is less than 10, then return username. I might have said greater than a second ago, but I meant this less than. So if the username length is less than 10, return it. The simpler version, what we just had, is just to return username.length less than 10. And what it'll do is it'll run that on every single username. And if it returns true, then it puts that username into the new array. So there's all types of variations of this. You could use arrow functions if you wanted to. Uh, you could use cons and lets to assign, you know, assign the function to a variable. It doesn't matter. They're all just different ways of getting to the same solution. So hopefully this helps you understand a little bit better what this type of exercise is asking for. Uh, the main difference between this and what you may have learned in the video is that in the video you're kind of just focusing on the usernames.filter part instead of actually putting it inside of a function. And so now what we're doing is kind of making it more of a real world thing where we're not just taking an array and filtering over it, but we're also plugging that, or what they call is wrapping that inside of a function. That way it can be used over and over again on any number of arrays, right? So at this point, we can run valid usernames on 20 different arrays and they'll all return new arrays that have usernames or strings rather that are less than 10 characters. So if you have any questions, please don't hesitate to ask in the Q&A. We'll be happy to help you there. Hopefully this helps you get over uh, whatever little uh, hump that you're having here trying to figure this stuff out. Thanks for watching and we'll catch you in the next video.